Rudy Ray Moore, 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 Rudy Ray Moore. Hi everyone, I'm Scott. Welcome back to my series, Decades of Action Challenge. Of the Decades of Action Challenge, whatever you want to say. Um, this uh, series was inspired by a couple of guys on YouTube called Forger Ball and Razor Wire Reviews. Uh, Ian and uh, Luke, they've been doing a series called the Epic Film Challenge in which they uh, watch and then make videos about entries in a book called 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, and I'm doing something similar to that. Well, instead of using a book, I'm using a series of articles written by a guy named Tom Brehan uh, for the AV Club website, avclub.com, and it's called History of Violence, and it's about the history of action movies, starting with uh, 1968 and moving forward to the present. Um, it's picking basically one movie for each year, starting with 1968 as the most important action movie of each year. Uh, and uh, for 1975, he picked a movie called Dolomite, a movie that I'd never seen before, uh, didn't know a heck of a lot about, and most of these movies that I haven't seen before, I'm really not doing a ton of research on them. I might have read a little bit of the essay, um, and uh, but uh, I'm going in cold, so I really don't know a whole lot about what I'm getting into. And with this movie, um, <laughs> this movie is probably the lowest budget of all the films that will be on this list right here. I looked ahead, actually, to 1992 to see whether or not he picked El Mariachi, and he didn't. This movie definitely reminds me of El Mariachi, only it is way, way less technically competent. Um, yeah, there's the shadow of a camera rig on the ground, there's boom mics in the shot, uh, the s s picture's out of focus, the sound's out of focus. It's a very, very small budget um, uh, film uh, made by a bunch of people who've never made a film before, I suppose. Um, the director's name is uh, Derville Martin. Derville Martin. D apostrophe Erville Martin. Um, he plays a character uh, in, in the movie named Willie Green. Uh, he's an actor who's appeared in movies like Black Caesar, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Rosemary's Baby. Um, the only other film he directed was after um, Dolomite. It's called Disco 9000. Don't really know a lot about that. Um, but, uh, yes, this is, um, basically was started as a vehicle for a, uh, comedian, uh, named Rudy Ray Moore. Um, basically he, uh, did some sort of, like, spoken word comedy, I guess, just like, uh, parables or something like that. He performs a couple of these in the film itself. Um, there's this sort of big concert at the end in which he does sort of like a big... Uh, performance, and he does um, uh, sort of a riff uh, uh, about the midway point in the movie in which he talks about the Titanic, this sort of rhyming verse. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of why he became known. Rudy Ray Moore is the, uh, uh, how he became uh, 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 known as an entertainer uh, by doing these sort of comedy rhyming stories, I suppose. I said, don't know a lot about this movie, I don't know a lot about this guy, mostly just from what I've read in the essay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the movie itself basically is sort of a crime story. Um, you've got this guy who has been wrongly convicted, or at least he was set up by uh, crooked FBI agents to go to federal prison on drug charges uh, and stolen property and what have you, so he's been in prison. And um, early on in the movie, the warden um, says to him, So, um, Mr. Dolomite, um, so, uh, you were, uh, convicted of the, uh, you know, drug distribution in this area of L.A., but, um, as it turns out, the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, trafficking, uh, hasn't really gone down, so we figure you must not be guilty, although we can't prove that, so we're gonna let you out of prison so that you can prove, uh, your own innocence. Like, yeah, that's a thing that happens. Right, sure, okay. <laughs> so he gets out of prison, and he gets his favorite duds back, and he gets in the car with a bunch of ladies, and then... Uh, some guys are, uh, uh, start following him, and he ends up tricking them uh, and, and gunning them down with a machine gun. This all just happens, you know, within the first few scenes of the movie. Um, but uh, he um, discovers that uh, those crooked FBI agents were actually um, uh, working for uh, this character, Willie Green, uh, played by the director, uh, Derville Martin, um, so that Derv uh, so that Willie Green could take over his territory. Um, Dolomite was the sort of uh, big guy uh, in town. Um, he was uh, a club owner, but also, you know, 
uh, aside from that, also a big time drug dealer. Um, and for some reason, he's hero. He, he's the hero of the movie. This other guy's a drug dealer, but he took over his territory, and so it's just basically a battle of wills between these two gangsters. Um, so he goes around trying to figure out the best way to uh, to take this guy down. Um, you know, get uh, get one over on the feds and the other uh, people that are uh, you know corrupt and working for the gangster. And it's all just basically a chance for everyone to sort of show off their style and act really tough and really cool. Uh, and uh, and then you know fight a bunch of people. You know, <clears throat> there's uh, there's plenty of fighting and shooting going on, but it's not really uh, <laughs> smoothly staged action sequences. Um, none of the uh, fight scenes are really all that impressive until the very end when you have a big climax that takes place at this club um, that Dolomite's trying to get back from uh, the gangster that stole it. Um, and there's some decent fighting in there, but for the most part it's uh, not covered that technically well. Um, you know, the uh, most of the scenes are covered with uh, just a few basic camera angles. In fact, the big concert at the end has various uh, shots of the performers on stage, the dancers, the singers, what have you. But when it comes to the audience, they always use the same angle. They have basically uh, the camera sitting on the stage looking directly out at the audience, and they go back to the exact same shot every single time there's a shot of the crowd. Which just goes to show, which I think says a lot about just how much time and how much money they didn't have to make this movie. Um, they, they could only afford the time to just do one crowd shot and have that be uh, you know, what they would cut back to throughout the whole sequence. Um, I think that says a lot. Um, but... Despite its flaws, this is a fun movie. It's very entertaining. Um, you can, I think, get away with a lot of uh, technical problems and, and uh, general uh, lack of professional sheen if uh, you have the enthusiasm, the energy, the, the zest uh, that these guys have. And they certainly do. Uh, it's not a good movie, but it certainly is fun. Um, one of the things that Brehan uh, was talking about uh, in, his, uh, in his article is, um, the, in a weird way, the no-budget gonzo spirit of Dolomite prefigured a movie like Mad Max, Dolomite became a part of the culture in ways that most movies with exponentially higher budgets will never match, and it remains way more watchable than it logically should be. And yeah, it's, uh, and I agree with that, you know, with there's um, a lot to be said for the enthusiasm uh, of, uh, and, and the, uh, just the sheer joy that you, um, that, that is expressed by the people making this movie, even though they don't really uh, know what they're doing for the most part. I mean, it isn't like completely incompetent movie, but it's, um, you know, certainly there's a lot of issues with it that you wouldn't find in, you know, something with a more professional pedigree. Um, so yeah, that's, um, a, uh, kind of sort of recommendation from me. I enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, but uh, yeah, probably one I'll never watch again, but uh, it was kind of tough tracking down a copy. I couldn't get it on demand, I couldn't get it from, you know, any of the local libraries near me, so I had to go all the way to the city to some, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, a DVD shop with a lot of old films in order to find it. But I'm glad I did. I'm glad I uh, haven't uh, 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 missed out on anything so far in the series. Once I get into more contemporary films, <clears throat> especially getting into like the late 80s, early 90s, then I'll be, you know, ending up talking about movies that I have seen multiple times uh, and know way more about because I was very aware of, you know, <clears throat> what was going on when those movies were in theaters. Because um, I saw most of them in the theater, um, looking ahead to, uh, you know, um, you know the, the 90s especially, because I saw tons and tons of action movies um, in the theater when they first opened uh, all throughout that decade. Um, as far as the guessing that I'm doing, um, I actually... Um, didn't um, state any sort of uh, average um, the last time I did this thing. There wasn't a new article uh, posted today. That will be next week uh, when um, Brehan publishes his um, his essay on The Rock, which came out in 1996. Um, I guessed that one correctly, but so far I've only guessed, starting with 1983, um, I think seven, no, no, sorry, eight or nine out of 14, I calculated it was like less than 60% of, of my guesses so far have been right, which is definitely a failing grade. <laughs> it is uh, certified rotten. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, and, and some of these guesses I just took, you know, wild shots at. You know, I figured that um, 2003 would be first the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and the year after that would be Kill Bill Volume 2, but maybe Kill Bill Volume 1 will be 2003, and 2004 will be something else. I have no idea. Um, 
But uh, yeah, that won't be uh, coming out for a few more months yet. I still have to finish off the 90s. Um, I'm fairly certain about some of them, but others, I just don't know. Um, so uh, that's not really the important part, though, the guessing and everything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, soon we'll be getting into the 80s stuff with uh, Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, uh, Aliens, uh, the Terminator movies, the Rambo movies, uh, and then on to the 90s, and I'm really looking forward to that, but that's uh, a still a few months away. My next video will be, of course, next week, and that will be uh, 1976, and Brehan has selected for that particular year the bona fide action movie classic, John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13, which I have seen but just one time before, so I'll be looking forward to revisiting that very much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. See you again next time.